Hi there, EA Tischler here with New Horizons Golf. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about the, the dynamics in the golf swing and sort of how I look at how those dynamics come together in golfers. In, in general, I think of the, the dynamics of the golf swing coming together in what I call stages. And for most golfers, or for many golfers, I, say, I would say that they have what I call a two-stage golf swing. For other golfers, they have what I call a three-stage golf swing. So what do I mean by this? So the first stage of action that we were looking at in the golf swing is how we're pressuring into the ground. And this sort of ties into the concept that power golf's played from the ground up, ties into some of the power stacking concepts I've talked about in the past also. But that first dynamic stage is the interaction between our body and the ground, which is in our feet. And the way that we pressure into the ground, just how I'm getting that pressure shift back and through, how I'm using the way I pressure into the ground, to, to get the forces, the dynamic forces working through my body properly or efficiently or effectively for me. And so there are a lot of different types of ground force patterns there are a lot of different ways of pressuring into the ground, but everybody needs to pressure into the ground. And so I think of that as sort of that, that as the first stage of activity for the golfer. The second stage of activity being, how do we utilize the, the rotational forces or the torquing forces in the body? How do we get build that torque? So we're pressuring into the ground. Now we're starting to add some turn and we're starting to add some range of motion with the turn of the golf swing. That's stage two. And for those golfers that are stage three golfers, then we start to utilize the arm swing and we lengthen that arc of the golf swing. When that length of that golf swing gets longer, you know, then they have sort of a third stage of multiplying power in their golf swing. You know, some people may, you may equate this to sort of a, a rocket launching off the space. You know, we have that initial booster that launches it into space and we drop that one behind and then we have the second stage of firing and then we leave that behind and now we've got that capsule out there in space. So what we're trying to do is look at how can we get these stages to build on each other. So the first thing that I want to do is, is get that, fir that first stage of activity, that ground force pattern working for me. Again, I call it a ground force pattern instead of ground reaction force because the way I put pressure into the ground athletically is what I call your ground force pattern. So I'm just going to demonstrate a basic uh, process here for me, um, just getting that idea of how I'm getting the stage one activity set up here. So I want to make sure that I'm in dynamic posture. I'm using my body. I've got my thighs engaged, my glutes engaged. I feel like I have a little bit of a squat in there. And I do that more at address to begin with. Some golfers would add that into the backswing, and so they're sort of loading that dynamic posture in the golf swing as they're pressuring into the ground and that's okay as well and some people would even do it more in the transition to get that dynamic posture ready you know to explode or to utilize that pressure we're putting into the ground so first thing I'm going to do though is I'm going to get in dynamic posture so I make sure that I've got that that sense of my thighs and my glutes are engaged now from here I'm going to pressure my rearward foot as I start the, the backswing and then I'm going to move and pressure my forward foot as I move into the forward swing. So I'm looking for this pressure down, pressure down sort of feel for me. So let's get set up. And I'm just gonna work on this little pressure shift back and through. Okay, so I had a nice little pressure shift there and I'm just getting started today. I haven't warmed up or anything. So I'll, typically, again, when you're warming up, you're gonna miss some shots and that's okay. So again, good little pressure shift back and through now. Got my dynamic, dynamic posture. Pressure that right foot back, left foot forward. Okay, now typically for me, as I'm warming up, I will catch some shots a little heavy at first. You know, even when I'm working on getting the pressure shift right and left, right and left, I'm not quite utilizing that forward pressure to posture up or to post up on that front leg yet. And that's part of getting the stage one activity proper. So as I continue to warm up now, I'm going to get, get the pressure to my right foot, shift it to my left foot, and then I'm going to use that forward pressure to post up a little on my front leg. Okay, now there's the first one that I really caught flush so far. Again, my third swing, and I really you know, caught that one nice and flush. So, and that's what I'm looking for. First, I get the pressure shift, then I'm going to use that forward pressure shift to get some posting in my lead leg. You notice that these look like partial swings. They're not big swings yet. You know, I'm just sort of making a, a, as big a comfortable swing as I feel I can make just with the pressure shift leading the dance. And I'm not trying to add a lot of extra turn or range of motion in yet. Now 
Yeah, that was another good shot, good contact, good smooth divot there. You know, that was a nice line of flight shot right at my target. As I continue to work on these shots, I'm going to actually work the swing a little bigger and bigger and bigger, but only as big as I'm sort of allowing that pressure shift to, to do the work. Now, of course, I'm going to add turn in. I can't do this without adding turn in, but I'm not consciously focusing on adding the turn in at this point yet. I'm just really trying to get the sense of a nice, strong pressure shift, loading pressure in the right foot as I go back, transitioning it to my front foot, and then using the pressure on the front foot so I can get a good posting up action. So at least I'm starting that posturing up activity in my golf swing. So here we go, pressure, pressure, post. Again, these are shots that I'll actually play on the golf course. These are actually very, very effective golf shots. So now there's different ways of doing this. I push down on my right foot and then my right foot torques. Then I feel that pressure go, and it almost feels like a lateral step to my left foot as I go forward and then I'm using that pressure to posture up and then I actually feel that the foot roll just a little bit as I go through and then it goes around in my left foot. So that's my particular way that I'm aware of my pressure shifts. Other people are a little bit more torquing. They feel like they're sort of corkscrewing their feet into the ground in the backswing and corkscrewing them into the ground in the forward swing. And this reminds me a little bit more of a Bernard Longer type of action. So let's get that corkscrew feel now. Again, pretty good corkscrew action. That shot was a little thin. It was a little quick because I'm sort of conscious of doing this because this is not my normal you know, pattern. But a good corkscrew, twist it back, twist it through. And that one was a lot better that time. Actually, I sort of remembered that when I do the corkscrewing action, I actually focus more on my left foot than my right foot when I do it well. The first one I was trying to do both feet you know, and most golfers that are corkscrewers try to feel both feet, but you got to find out the best way that works for you. So I'm going to do one more of those, focusing on corkscrewing that left foot into the ground. Now, once again, that was a nice, you know, stage one type activity right there. Real good pressure shift. I like that. You know, some golfers have more of a roll of the ankle move. They sort of, you know, roll the ankles back, roll the ankles through. Maybe it's even just one ankle again that they focus on, but they have much more of a rolling the ankles back and through. Jack Nicklaus comes to mind, Byron Nelson, the, the rocking chair image, Tom Watson. So again, you can test it out and see if that works for you. But I can get in there and get that feel of more of what a roll the ankles back and roll the ankles through version would be. Colin Montgomery actually comes to mind when I think of this one as, as well. Roll those ankles back, roll those ankles through. Again, nice solid shots, and those are good patterns. They, they don't feel natural to me or condition normal to me because of the fact that I don't really do those a lot. But again, I can demonstrate them and do pretty good with them. There's also sort of the heel up in the backswing, heel up in the forward swing. And not that I mean that in any of the other ones, I'm, I'm trying to keep the heels down because I never really think of keeping the heels planted in anything. But definitely there's this sort of step back, step through. And there's sort of the old time drills of even, even sort of taking a little step back and taking a little step through to sort of get the idea of how those, the footwork works for this heel up, heel you know, through idea. But that may work for you. So get in there again, good dynamic posture. Feel that left heel up in the backswing right heel up in the forward swing you know jack nicholas had a lot of this and sam sneed had a lot of this so you know you could have combined actions jack nicholas sort of he had a rolling of the ankles but he also had the heel up move which is a good move to have okay so let's try that again nice little heel up in the back swing heel up in the for, uh, forward swing left heel up right heel up now that one thinks, you know, for me, it takes a lot of thought, so I don't think about that. Again, I don't want to try to lift my heels up, you know, but it's okay to allow them to go up and down in, in the golf swing. And definitely in the forward swing, we're always seeing that right heel finish off in a much more vertical position with basically all these patterns. Okay, so that's stage one, figuring out your stage one. Stage one is how do I pressure into the ground? And then how do I use that forward pressure to get a little bit of posturing up? 
basically I've got that lower body activity going here okay now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some more turn into this so I get a little bit bigger range of motion I'm still going to feel the pressure shift so I'm going to be turning forward and then I want to make sure I finish off the posturing with my upper body so I want the upper body to add its posturing up into this activity so we're going to add a little bit of turn back and turn through and we're still going to have those pressure shifts working for us So that's what I call a control swing. That was a nice shot there. And you know, we're just trying to get that sense now, how do I get a little bit more range of motion into this activity with my turn, still using the pressure shifts as that stage one activity. Now we're adding the turn for bigger range of motion and we're really finishing it off with good posture in the body. And, and this takes it up to what I call a nice control swing. This is a good uh, wedge to short iron type golf swing, or if you're just looking for a nice control trajectory in a longer club, it works great also. Okay, so pressure back and forth. Let's go ahead and make sure that we're also getting the, the turns into here now. Good, good pressure shifts, good turns. I like that. Rhythm was a little quick. Okay, I caught it a little thin. That's the worst shot I had all day. That'll be just fine. Okay, again, get that dynamic posture. Good pressure shifts, good turn finish off that motion okay, real solid really good shot that time okay now a lot of people that's sort of as far as they go they just take the turn back and through as deep as they can and they feel like their arms stay very connected to their body and that becomes their full swing so I'm just gonna make a more full swing version but I'm gonna keep my arms nice and connected here and this is still just gonna be finishing off this sort of stage two swing here So that shot had more power and had a bigger range of motion and that was a nice you know powerful stage two swing well what other players feel is they feel like they start stretching out the arc of their swing or they make a longer arm swing so again they get the pressure shift they got their turns they lengthen out that arm swing and and some people really feel that swing go past parallel which is fine as long as it stays you know unified with the body activity it doesn't get too separated to where they have a hard time reconnecting so but it's okay a lot of golfers have long swings and do very well with it well this arm swing stretching out this activity for them is what I would call the third stage but it still needs to link up and it still needs to be connected with what the body's doing here so I'm gonna try to lengthen the, the arm swing here and see if I can get the third stage loaded into this so good dynamic posture good pressure shifts full turn but let's lengthen this arm swing So I definitely lengthened the arm swing that time. I actually saw the club head in the, uh, out of my left eye there at the top of the backswing. So I know that the arc of that stroke went longer that time. I'm going to go ahead and do that again. I'm stretching that arc out, making a wider arc back and through. And really, I want to be able to just barely see that club head show up at the top of the backswing. So again, mechanically, that was a pretty good stage three swing. Again, I saw that club head just a little bit out of my left eye. My rhythm's a little off. Again, even right now, I don't really feel like I'm completely warmed up. You know, so I feel like, you know, I'm sort of stretching the limits of what I'm comfortable with now. Normally, I'd warm up and I'd just let myself slowly progress until I get to this point. Okay, nice stretched out arm swing now. Nice long arc. Still feeling the pressure shift, still feeling the turn but I'm just lengthening that arc out to get that stage three action. Okay, really good. That was actually more solid that time. You know, got that better compression. All right, let's do one more here just to get this feel, lengthening the swing out, getting that pressure shift, that lower body action is stage one, bigger turn, posturing up getting the upper body action to finish its motion stage two then getting that arm swing stretching that arc out a little bit more stage three
Okay, that one was a little thin, but still, that's a pretty good stage reaction. So I hope you get the ideas of what I'm talking about. Remember, not everybody's going to be a stage three player. There's a lot of really, really good stage two players that feel like all they're trying to do is get a good connected arm swing. They're creating good pressure shifts in their body. And then from that pressure shift, they're just trying to get that sense of a good turn and stay connected. And there's a lot of power in that type of swing. And there's even a lot of good tour players that have that action. But there are people that naturally swing that arm swing out longer. And they do get the arm swing action, you know, stretched out. The upper body is doing its, its activity and the turn is big enough and the lower body and pressuring into the ground is good as well. So here we go. One more stage sweep swing just to wrap it up. Okay, if you got any questions about you know, how to get your stages in order and how to get them working together, go ahead and send me a message and we'll get you all squared away.